Aloha, everyone. I'm Irmina Van Dyken, MD, from Out of the Doldrums. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health. We're going to cover brand new research on two topics today. The first topic is how long the novel coronavirus lives on various surfaces, and the second, what we know about incubation periods for coronavirus, meaning how long from when you get infected to when you start to show symptoms. For some background on the novel human coronavirus, it's been detected in both the upper and the lower respiratory tract of patients, and we found that there were high viral loads in upper respiratory tract samples. We think the main way of transmission is by respiratory secretions in the form of droplets, which are liquids greater than 5 microns in size, or aerosols, which are liquids that are less than 5 microns in size. When you look at the history, researchers think that airborne transmission may have been responsible for what they called the largest super spreading event during the original SARS epidemic in 2002 and 2003. They also think it was linked to numerous nosocomial spreading events. In other words, spreading of the virus in a hospital or healthcare situation. So let's start off with the first study. How long does SARS-CoV-2 live on certain surfaces? I refer you to a paper which has been released on a scientific forum as a preliminary paper. This has been submitted to the New England Journal of Medicine, but it's not gone through full peer review yet. The scientific forum exists so that information can get rapidly disseminated to scientists and medical professionals, thereby hopefully slowing the spread of the disease. Anyhow, the manuscript is titled Aerosol and Surface Stability of HCoV-19, SARS-CoV-2, Compared to SARS-CoV-1. So basically, the scientists looked at the stability on surfaces when it's aerosolized, and they compared it to the SARS virus, also known as SARS-CoV-1. Overall, they found that they're very similar as far as stability. In the study, scientists created an aerosol of the novel coronavirus. This was created to mimic the effects of coughing or sneezing with release of droplets into the air. If you want to get technical, these aerosols were generated using a three-jet collision nebulizer and fed into something called a Goldberg drum, and this created an aerosolized environment. They then had filters that they passed the air through at certain time intervals that collected any viruses left in the environment. What they found is quite interesting. They found that the virus remained alive and viable in aerosols throughout the duration of their experiment, meaning they found that there was a reduction in the viral count three hours after aerosolization. So they concluded that the coronavirus can be detected in aerosols up to three hours post aerosolization. They then went on to test how stable the coronavirus was on multiple surfaces, cardboard, copper, plastic, and stainless steel. They inoculated these surfaces with concentrations of virus that are similar to what would be seen in samples from a human respiratory tract. They then checked the areas at certain time intervals to see if the virus was still viable. So what they found was that the virus could stay viable up to four hours on a copper surface, up to 24 hours on cardboard, and up to two to three days on plastic and stainless steel. So from these results, we can conclude that the virus can stay alive on a surface for a while, depending on what the surface is. So in other words, if you have a copper countertop at home, the virus will only live on that countertop for four hours. But for the rest of us, we may be more interested in those other survival times. The virus can survive up to 24 hours on cardboard. So that Amazon package you're getting in the mail, you don't have to worry about that too much. If you're worried about it though, just let it sit around for 24 hours before opening it. The plastic in the packaging may be a different matter though. The virus can stay alive for two to three days on plastic. So in this example of an Amazon package, it depends on how long it took to get to you. A lot of surfaces are made out of plastic and stainless steel. So it's best to disinfect these surfaces regularly, as we know the virus can stay viable on them for up to two to three days. Again, a big disclaimer is the fact that this paper has not yet been peer reviewed. However, I feel like it comes from credible sources and the science is sound. Additionally, it's been submitted to one of the most prominent medical journals, the New England Journal of Medicine. Because of evolving events and the way things are changing so quickly, just like the online science forum, I feel it's important we should share this information as soon as possible.
So what should we do with all this information now that we have it? Well, to start, it should be a wise idea to avoid gatherings of any size and to avoid public spaces. If the novel coronavirus can truly aerosolize for up to three hours, your chances of contracting or spreading COVID-19 increase dramatically when you're in those spaces. Masks can provide a barrier, but there's some limitations to this. First, it needs to fit properly. Second, you need to know how to properly put it on and take it off. It's surprisingly complicated. Third, a mask is no good if you continue readjusting the mask and touching your face and your eyes. Lastly, other mucous membranes like your eyes need to be covered as well if you want full protection. I'd like to take a moment to agree with the World Health Organization and the CDC regarding masks. We really should be saving these masks for people who are sick and for healthcare providers. If all the healthcare professionals get sick, there'll be no one left to take care of the ill. We already know that a surprising number of people affected with COVID-19 are healthcare workers. Let's not make it worse by having a run on masks. When it comes to surfaces, this data shows that it's very, very important to routinely wipe down all surfaces with disinfectant that's been shown to inactivate the novel coronavirus. For more info on this, check out my other video on this exact topic. It's linked in the description below. Moving on, let's talk about incubation times and transmission. An incubation period is when you've been infected with a virus, but you don't yet show symptoms. One of the big fears is that the novel coronavirus has a long incubation time, meaning from the time when you're infected to the time when you show symptoms is a long time. Potentially during this long time, you could be infecting other people without you even knowing it. The second paper is titled, Estimation of Incubation Period Distribution of COVID-19 Using Disease Onset Forward Time, a Novel Cross-Sectional and Forward Follow-Up Study. <laughs> wow, that's a mouthful. In this paper, Scientists talk about the incubation period, how the exact time is unclear. It varies dramatically. They then looked at data from China and found incubation period times. In a nutshell, they looked at numbers from a large population of people, and then they did a bunch of fancy mathematical calculations, and they found that the average time from infection to developing symptoms is about 8.13 days. They then show a graph of incubation times, Clearly, you can see a curve in the time from infection to the onset of symptoms. There was quite a variety. The shortest time was two days, and the longest time was over 20 days. What's really interesting, though, is if you look at the 90th percentile, it becomes very obvious that about 10% of patients with COVID-19 do not develop symptoms until after 14 days of being infected. You may think, well, that's only 10%. But let's just put that into perspective. If you have 100 people that were infected with the novel coronavirus, 90 of them would show symptoms within 14 days. 10 of them would not. If, theoretically, they were under a 14-day quarantine, those 10 people would be going back to work and their normal lives still infected but not showing symptoms and spreading the virus unknowingly. It definitely makes you think about a 14-day quarantine period versus a slightly longer quarantine period. Even if you kept people quarantined for 18 days, say, instead of 14, the spread of the disease would be dramatically decreased. Again, this is one more reason to use social distancing as a way to avoid contracting or spreading COVID-19. Social distancing is the best weapon we have to lower the rates of infection and to slow down the spread of infection. If we can slow down the spread of the infection, we decrease the chance of overwhelming our hospitals, our healthcare systems, and our resources. For many of us, it's the only tool we have to protect ourselves and to protect others. Speaking of protecting others, please, please think of the more vulnerable people who may not tolerate or survive being infected. Please think of the healthcare workers that you will wish were there caring for you should you need them. The most responsible thing to do, everyone, is social distancing. This means staying at home and away from people as much as you can. Try to work from home. Try to limit trips to the store, running errands. Try to eliminate public gatherings. If you miss the social aspect, maybe try a new way of getting together with your friends. How about hosting a Skype party? Let's get creative, guys. Let me know the ways that you're practicing social distancing. I want to know. At the end of the day, though, do it for yourself. Do it for your loved ones and do it for humanity. So there you have it. 
I hope you learned some new tips to help you become less susceptible to contracting the novel coronavirus. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you all, so please comment below with other topics you want to hear more about in the future. Until then, stay healthy, stay well, and aloha.